I wish him. With the Grand Circuit over for another season, harness racing in Australia and New Zealand in May was dominated by classic events for two and three year olds. Brilliant Perth juvenile Talladega set the ball rolling with an exciting victory in the $250,000 Australian Pacing Gold Final at Ballarat on the first of the month. Trained by Ross Oliveri and driven by Chris Lewis, the son of Classic Gary cruised to the front from Barrier 4 before scoring by 8.5 metres, rating a track record 157.8 for 1,680 metres. A brother to WA Cup winner, Saab, Talladega fetched $26,000 as a yearling, but the Ballarat victory stretched his earnings to more than $168,000, with five wins from six starts. Up, it's Talladega in front, carving out the first quarter in 28.4, and the West Australian with a lap to go led five metres. Portofino second, sliding up Lethal Affair third. Fourth on the inside, Get Up Gambit. Outside of it was Lombo Sugar Ray as they head to the back. Red Spirit, the running line, is on the outside of All Scrap. Then came on the inside, Sudden Comfort from Kukri. Marbles trails at Stable Mate, and then Bogan Castle and Tail Love Safe Enforcer. 31-5 the second quarter, and Talladega leads by two metres as they head down the back. Lethal Affair running second, Portofino third. In fourth spot was Get Up Gambit. Wide out onto the track at the moment was Lombo Sugar Ray. Red Spirit in a bit of trouble there. Kukri slightly inconvenienced, going through along the inside was all scrap, and then came Marbles as they head off the back, but it's Talladega travelling well. 400 metres to go, it led 4 metres. Under the whip was Lethal Affair, then came Get Up Gambit, Red Spirit running on, Portofino struggling, and then Lombo Sugar Ray, Kukri. Oh, Marbles in trouble there, galloped as they come around the turn. Talladega well clear, straightens up 6 or 7 metres in front. Lethal Affair second, then came Get Up Gambit, further out was Red Spirit, but it's all Talladega under a hold with 100 to go. And the West Australian boom youngster has the Aussie goal shot to bits. Talladega's going to win it by a dozen metres. Second placing lethal affair. Third goes to Red Spirit just in front of Get Up Gambit. Classy Philly, third behind OK Rock in the Great Northern Oaks in Auckland in January, turned the tables on her rival when they clashed in the New Zealand Oaks at Addington. When OK Rock assumed the role of pacemaker in the $60,000 Group 1 event, Classy Philly was near the rear of the 14-horse field before facing the breeze from the 800-metre mark. Responding gamely to the urgings of Ricky May, Classy Philly wore down OK Rock to win by half a head. OK Rock the favourite in front by half a length from Windermere Girl who beat her last start and back on the inside to Smooth Marie. Classy Philly's out three wide. In between horses, Solberg and the orange with the red cap of Jim Curtin. Inside the 862.1. Close to heaven and the blue with the white stars. Then time for home in amongst horses. Then as they raced down the back, they were followed by Miss Alliance, a teller wider. Then came Scoot, Soakies Rage in the green and gold. Followed by Better Bet. Back behind those two are Pekka Malinka and uh, Moss Garden. They're heading for home. 350 metres to go. And OK Rock, the favourite in front. OK Rock, Windermere Girl. Classy Philly Solberge followed then by Miss Alliance. Time for home at Teller and further back, better bet. OK Rock, 200 to go. Classy Philly trying to out sprinter and Classy Philly's got up on the outside. OK Rock will have to dig deep. It's Classy Philly. OK Rock coming back. Classy Philly. OK Rock. Classy Philly half ahead from OK Rock. Better bet has flew for third. Still in New Zealand at Addington a week later. Mr. Metallica strengthened his claims to being the best two-year-old in the country with an emphatic victory in the size stake final. Off the second row, Mr. Metallica was caught facing the breeze for the last 1,400 metres of the $150,000 classic before scoring by a length. It was the third win with two seconds from five starts for the Sable Vision Gelding, trained by Gary Mackett and driven by David Butcher. And the leader home for Christmas. Mr. Metallica's ranged up outside it. Right in behind every chance in the trail. Tupelo Rose and Kevin Townley swinging on it. 800 to go. Mighty moment in the red cap outside of Bird of Prey with 30 Nutty Ostream down on the inner. Next is Easy Anvil. Followed in the centre by Scoot. Mysteriously by Jack Atoris, the New South Wales rep starting his move. London Express is going to keep him wide. And Stars and Stripes, the half 63-7. Out of the back, 600 metres to 
to go now. And uh, the leader home for Christmas, three quarters clear. Home for Christmas, still in front. Right beside it, scooped mysteriously by Mr. McCallica, just ahead of that though. And Tupelo Rose waiting for a space in the inner. Wide around, we've got Easy Anvil and Mighty Moment. And hitting the rest, Adios Dream and London Express wide. They swing for home, 200 metres to go. Mr. Metallica shot clear. Mr. Metallica, Easy Anvil, London Express coming in stars and stripes down the outer. Mr. Metallica, London Express down Stars and Stripes, Mr. Metallica holding, Mr. Metallica getting there, gets up to beat Stars and Stripes, London Express, Tupelo Rose didn't get... Fifth behind Classy Philly in the New Zealand Oaks, Soul Birds returned to form with a vengeance when she won the $110,000 Hydro Flow Phillies final at Addington. Trained by Jim Dalgetty and driven by Jim Curtin, Soul Birds had several rivals in front of her turning for home, but ran on strongly to win by a short neck. She rated 158 for the mobile, 1950 metres, a New Zealand record for her age and sex, with the last 800 metres in 57.1 seconds to post her sixth win from 19 starts. And on down the back they travel, the bunch covered by about eight lengths with 600 metres to run. Windermere Girl's the leader, Windermere Girl about a half a length clear, OK Rock breathing down a neck. And over the outside is time for home. In the centre we've got Miss Alliance, Smooth Marie struggling to keep up on the back of the others, better bets trying to finish it off. Classy Philly waiting for a bit of space in the centre. Then to Peckham, Malinka and close to heaven and Solberge. Round the bend for home they come. Windermere Girl, OK Rock the outside now throwing down the gauntlet to it, better bets coming at the pair of them then to a pick and a link, classy Philly trying to bulldoze her way out it's Windermere girl, better bet here comes Solberg with a weathering run down the outside, Solberg and through the centre, classy Philly, Solberg got there, classy Philly got up for second, Windermere girl and then better bet will... Lombo Rapida, a gallant second to Mother Courage in the Victoria Oaks returned to the state of her birth to win the $50,000 WA Oaks at Gloucester Park on the 21st of May, providing Trevor Warwick with his fourth win in Perth's premier event for Phillies. It was the third successive WA Oaks victory for owner Mick Lombardo and co-trainers Noel Alexander and Zane Davies after winning the previous two editions with Concord Lombo and TaylorMade Lombo. With 5.50 to run, it's serious up front now with Disco Lights led a half length on Lombo Repeater and the sprint is on. They've got away about two and a half lengths on our special angel. A similar margin to Irene of Argyle. Sabrina starting to make ground now. And then Penny for thoughts, and I wouldn't give a penny for the rest of these chances. 29-6 third quarter. It's Disco Lights being eyeballed by Lombo Repeater as they come to the corner. They're about two on our special angel, Sabrina. It's Lombo Repeater asserting her authority. She's taken the lead from Disco Lights. Our special angel, Sabrina, is rattling home. But this is a wonderful filly. And Lombo Repeater drew clear to score. One at a length on the line. It's three for Lombardo. Second in was Disco Lights. Third, our special angel. Then... The brilliant but sometimes erratic Alabama's idol put it all together when he won the $60,000 Oceania El Dorado final for three-year-old trotters at Ballarat. Driven by Michael Langdon, the son of champion trotter Maori's idol, trotted faultlessly and cleared out in the straight to win by nine metres. The victory provided trainer Danny Norris with a welcome change of luck after being severely injured in a horrific race fall at Mooney Valley nine months earlier. Fell Pride looked beaten, Rocky Bloomfield headed it, and it's now joined by Alabama's idol. Four metres to Ryan's flash, keeping in touch. Out there wide spontaneously, and then Bell salute. Fell Pride dropped out, and Starlight's child now moves into sixth spot, heading off the back of the 400. It's Rocky Bloomfield by ahead to Alabama's idol, but it's still coming the outside. Now they've drawn away. Ten metres in front of Ryan's flash, Bell salute going through along the inside. Side. Alabama's Idol put its head in front, rounding the turn. Third quarter, 30.6. It's Alabama's Idol and Rocky Bloomfield. Eight metres to Bell Salute, still running on. And then spontaneously in Ryan's flash, but it's Alabama's Idol trotting clear. A hundred left to go. He puts six metres on Rocky Bloomfield. Bell Salute spontaneously wide, but a faultless display by Alabama's Idol, and he wins it convincingly. Alabama's Idol, Michael Langdon, win at ten metres. Second, Rocky Bloomfield. Third, Bell Salute from spontaneously. The following weekend, the spotlight was on the city of Bendigo for the second running of the Breeders' Crown Series for two-year-old Pacers and Trotters. Gozo Heritage, a son of classic winners My Handsome Fella and Art Le Monde, blew most punters away when he finished strongly 
to win at tote odds of more than $102. The win did not surprise trainer Ange Pace or his son Ray, who drove the youngster, but they did call for some pre-race divine intervention by asking the pacing priest, Father Brian Glasheen, to bless the colt before the final. Five And Tarbox the leader at the 700. Five metres in front of Comedy of Eros. Trojan Twin has worked hard as back third. On the inside, fourth is Swinging Scooter. Then 15 letters, Lord of Darkness, four back the inside. Gozo Heritage wide around break and enter. And then Jimmy Blacksmith and keep him safe is out to last. 500 left to go. And it's Tarbox by five metres to Comedy of Eros. Trojan Twin under some pressure battling on. Hooking out very wide. Gozo Heritage is winding up. Trying to get through the centre was Lord of Darkness 15 letters dropping out the leader Tarbox Gozo Heritage is charging up the rank outsider then Comedy of Eros, Lord of Darkness is winding up third quarter 32.3 and Gozo Heritage hit the lead, Gozo Heritage on the outside took over from Tarbox then Comedy of Eros along the inside swinging scooter but it's Gozo Heritage in front for Ray Pace 4 metres clear, Tarbox and wide out Lord of Darkness but Gozo Heritage wins it Gozo Heritage has scored. Photo the Miners, Tarbox and Lord of Darkness. Another father and son team, Kilmore trainer Don Stewart and his Rainsman son Scott, combined with Corn Silk to win the Phillies division. Corn Silk, a daughter of the Unicorn, drew the second row in the final and was giving the leaders at least 35 metres start at one stage of the race. Three wide for the last lap, Corn Silk showed plenty of courage to win by two metres, rating 201.2 a fraction slower than Gozo Heritage. And Silken Sat Lombo is the leader. Nearing the 600, Pelican Rama getting a bit closer though. There's only a neck between the two. Five metres away, Colleen's Classic. Navy Girl dropped out. Corn Silk runs on, gets to fourth, about eight metres off the lead. Sunset Soki trailing it, and then came Montana, justifiably so. Navy Girl, Eyes of an Angel, and Tanya Castle heading off the back of the 400. And the leader, Sil Silken Sat Lombo, by a neck to Pelican Rama. Three white Corn Silk, five metres off the lead. Montana's run right up behind the leader. Sunset Set Soaky will be coming out four wide. Then Collins Classic as they round the turn. Third quarter, 29.2. Pelican Rama's flat out. Silk and Sat Lombo led Corn Silk. Sunset Soaky running on. Halfway up the straight, Corn Silk. Sunset Soaky, Montana getting through. Corn Silk hit the lead. Corn Silk in front from Pelican Rama. Sunset Soaky. Corn Silk's going to win the Breeders' Crown. Corn Silk first has beaten Sunset Soaky and Silk and Sat Lombo. Klaus Koch, named after a Scandinavian harness racing administrator, posted an effortless victory in the $31,000 Breeders' Crown for Trotters. Trained and driven by Peter Manning, the youngster was untroubled to score by 16 metres, rating a tick over 2-7. Klaus Koch is by the contender, ironically the same sire as remarkable veteran trotter Knight Pistol, the only trotters Manning had in his Great Western stables. But Klaus Koch at the 400, led by 20 metres. On the outside, Troublesome Miss is uh, on the uh, level uh, now with global interest as they work inside the 400. Then it gallop Troublesome Miss. So Klaus Koch, 20 metres in front, rounding the turn. Third quarter in 30.4. Klaus Koch into the straight. 20 metres clear of global interest. Cannon Ed Gallop. Storm Blazer still coming home with Come On Sam. But Klaus Koch is well out in front with 100 to go. And Klaus Koch is going to blitz them in the Breeders' Crown Trotters final. Klaus Koch first for Peter Manning, wins it by 15 metres. Second global interest, Storm Blazer got going to run third. New Zealand horseman Kevin Townley, who won most of Victoria's juvenile Trotters Classic events with Solar Fire a season earlier, returned with another promising youngster in June. Her name was Sunning, and she was shining brightly after outclassing her rivals in the $30,000 Victoria Trotters Oaks at Mooney Valley. Sitting patiently back in the field, Townley made his winning move down the back straight the last time, and the filly was untroubled to win by 13 metres. 32 seconds the second quarter, and the leader is Arnica's Pride by a metre to Maori's Crown. Third, Starlight's Child, Nefertiri fourth, then Mad As, Roads of Victory, Petite Morley, Sunning giving them 20 metres down the back, then Spontaneous Lee, Tammy Rama, Petite uh, second last, is uh, uh, well back in the field, Regal Land, and the one that dropped out, Brani Dell, 500 left to travel, and the leader is Arnica's Pride from Maori's Crown, and look at Sunning, it's made up 20 metres down the back straight, when straight 
past Maori's crown and Arnica's pride, and Sunning swept up to hit the lead. Third quarter was 32.6, and Sunning went for home around the bend, the Kiwi filly. She left them standing. Sunning is away from Arnica's pride, Maori's crown spontaneously, but it's Sunning with a big break. She took off at the 700 and just keeps going, and she's going to win it easily. What a win. Sunning first. Second is going to be close. Spontaneously gets it just in front of Maori's crown. A week later, top Victorian horseman Ted Demler made a hit-and-run visit to New Zealand to drive Tupelo Rose in the Caduceus Club Phillies Classic at Alexandra Park. Bought by stable clients earlier in the season, it was Demler's first drive on the daughter of In the Pocket. Leading for the last 1,800 metres of the Group 1 Classic, Tupelo Rose cleared out in the straight to win by six lengths, rating 159.9 with the last 800 metres in 58.1 seconds, and the final quarter in 28.6. And they're down the back now with just over 700 metres to go, and the leader is Two Pillow Rose by a length and a quarter. Esther Bell has landed up on the leader's wheel, Bhutan, nice run in the trail, still in there, followed Angel Anna for three out, in the 1-1 one, one now is Dancing on Moonlight, back on the inside, three deep is Shivna, out in no man's land and making ground quickly is Cosmic Ice, and there followed Light Phantom, Broken Promises, Brindle off the back, 400 metres to go, and Demlu eased out by two and a half on two pillow rows. Bhutan is sticking grimly though, on the outside, Cosmic Ice followed Esther Bella, then Shivna further out on the outside as they come in, is dancing on Moonlight, but two pillow rows goes for home, a clear leader, two and a half to Bhutan, followed by Cosmic Ice, then we've got Shivna over on the outside, dancing on Moonlight, but the group one, nearly asked Caduceus Club, Phillies Classics all over, and it's two pillow rows and a Cake walk by five lengths. Cosmic Ice second, Shivna third. They're followed. Lombo a Dreamin, a second string runner from the Noel Alexander stable, provided the first upset of the Brisbane Winter Carnival when she won the $50,000 Queensland Oaks at Albion Park at toad odds of nearly 50 to 1. In a roughhouse affair which saw two rainsmen suspended, Sydney horseman Greg Bennett brought Lombo a Dreamin with a late run to win by half a neck, depriving this. She should have gas in the tank. OK Rock. OK Rock's three quarters in front of Lombo Repeater. Trevor Warwick's calling upon her now. She's under some pressure. As the leader lengthens stride, My Liberty Bell next. Lombo a dream and pulling three wide. Then came Caribbean Miss. My Liberty Bell broke up there. Better bet swung around them, but OK Rock is off and gone. Carving a third quarter of 29 seconds. She's a length in front. Lombo a dream and giving chase. Going back to the inside was Lombo Repeater. Then came Better Bet. OK Rock, no gas in the tank. Lombo a dreamin' charging on the outside with better bed. OK, Rock and Lombo a dreamin'. Lombo a dreamin' drives to the lead with 50 metres to go. And Oaks Glory for Lombo a dreamin'. Lombo a dreamin' beat OK, Rock and Lombo repeat around third. Promising Victorian trotter, West Texas Crude, trained and driven by Neville Welsh, struck oil when he won the New South Wales Trotters Derby at Fairfield at the end of June. Sunning was a prohibitive favourite following her impressive Victoria Trotters Oaks win earlier in the month, but galloped in the score-up. Unraced as a two-year-old because he was too slow, West Texas Crude left his rivals in his wake in the straight, rating 208.3 for 2,513 metres. Going into the back, West Texas Crude, the leader. Keystone Johnny striding up the second, a bit over a length and a half behind the leader. Sunning is following him up now as they go down the back towards the 450. And then came Jacob's Wiz and Miss Philly Knickers and How Do You Do. They've got about 400 to go and the leader is still West Texas Crude out about three lengths in front from Keystone Johnny. Sunning going up on the outside now is starting to run into it pretty strongly. But oh, she put in a couple of bounties there. She's galloped the favourite. She's galloped. She's out of business. West Texas Crude straightens up well clear from Keystone Johnny. And uh, in third place is Jacob's Wiz, and How Do You Do has gone past Sunning. It's a real How Do You Do for the favourite. But uh, she's doing a, a, a real bad job here, Sunning. Was rather, she was cranky before the start, and it showed out in the race. And West Texas Crude wins easily from Jacob's Wiz. Third, Keystone Johnny. Fourth, How Do You Do. Shepparton Juvenile, Nature's Fury, had to survive a protest from the runner-up, Spur of Time, before claiming the Edgar Tatlow Stakes at Mooney Valley. Winner of the Sapling Stakes a fortnight earlier, the victory kept a unique double for trainer Ken Day, who won both classics with My Handsome Fella seven years earlier. Driven by Stephen Boyington, Nature's Fury sprinted home strongly to win by nearly two metres, 
but Boynton had a few anxious moments before the protest was dismissed. The leader is Kukri by three metres to Gone Roman. Second quarter in 32.1. Third on the inside goes O'Heritage. And out three wide now, Mona's mistake. In the middle was Prince Scorpio. Nature's Fury three wide with a trail. Spur of time in an awkward spot. Three back the inside. Then came White House Bill off the track, Kentucky Fella. And then Lombo Gadolari swing blade and last is Tar Box. Kukri leads 500 to go. Two and a half metres to Mona's mistake now challenging. Under pressure, Gone Roman. Then goes O'Heritage. Heritage. Nature's Fury running on strongly, so is Kentucky Fella wide out, heading off the back in 30.7, Kukri quickly collared by Mona's mistake and Nature's Fury appearing on the scene now, Nature's Fury swept up, they hit the lead from Mona's mistake, goes O Heritage is out, then Kentucky Fella and Tarbox, Nature's Fury in front of the 100, running after it, goes O Heritage and along the inside spur of time, Nature's Fury in front, finding something though and Nature's Fury will win it from spur of time, Nature's Fury First, Spur of Times runs second, third goes O Heritage. Talladega took his stake earnings to more than a quarter of a million dollars when he won the $50,000 Golden Slipper Stakes at Gloucester Park in July. A prohibitive four to one on favourite, Talladega scrambled home by a head in the state's premier juvenile race with the last quarter in a sensational 27.6 seconds. Look out from here. It's Knight of Stars starting to lengthen stride now as he heads to the far side inside the 600. He's still a length on Talladega, still not released by Lewis. Joke and Lorado third. Then chivalrous fella DJ three and Ruby Blood. Now Harper starts to get to work on Knight of Stars. Can he pinch the slipper off the back in 30.4? At the 350, he's a neck on Talladega who starts to want to get in on the action. Now a Lewis just clicked him up. He changed gear. He ranged alongside Knight of Stars and puts his head in front as they corner. Now Chivalrous Fella to the outside. Around the turn, Talladega takes the lead. Chivalrous Fella is rattling home down the outside. It's Talladega in front. The stable mate looms up on his outside. He just missed. He just missed. Talladega got in. He won it by a dead set breath on Chivalrous Fella. Third, uh, what do we have there? Uh, Ruby Blood was rattling home. Choking At Mooney Valley the following night, Pelican Rama reinforced her claims as Australia's best juvenile filly when she won the Edgar Tatlow Stakes. Pelican Rama took her first season's earnings to a staggering $267,151 with an ultra impressive win. Posting her 14th win from 20 starts, Pelican Rama rated 159 for 2,060 metres, slicing one and a half seconds off the previous race record. Out of the straight, heading towards the 800 metres, and Corn Silk leads Pelican Rama right on her back second. The second quarter in 30.7, so they pick it up a little bit. Sitting third, Promise Use three back the inside of Epona Sunshine, hooking three deep, justifiably so. And then came Eyes of an Angel, Sunset Soki, Helena Lombo, Delmont Felicity, Sandalira, Montana Last. They're really starting to uh, work down the back now. And it's Corn Silk, five metres to Pelican Rama, six metres to Promise You. And then came Eyes of an Angel, heading off the back, Corn Silk, four metres, Pelican Rama sticking. And they've raced away. It's certainly a match in two now. Third quarter in 29.6, Corn Silk, three metres to Pelican Rama, not done with. 15 metres to Promise You, and then came Eyes of an Angel. Corn Silk led, Pelican Rama hooks out. Pelican Rama goes to Corn Silk quickly. Pelican Rama hit the lead and raced past Corn Silk. Pelican Rama's coming away from Corn Silk. They have spaced the others. Third Eyes of an Angel from Sunset Soki, but Pelican Rama, two and a half metres to Corn Silk. 25 away, third was Eyes of an Angel. Veteran Victorian horseman Graham Lang was in raptures after steering the Robert Cameron train last sunset to victory in the home field at Mooney Valley. Lang declared the Kiwi a better three-year-old than his own Wagon Apollo after last sunset cruise to an 11-metre victory, rating 202.1 for 2,060 metres, just outside the track record set by Solar Fire a year earlier. The runner-up, New South Wales derby winner, West Texas Crude, was responsible for an excellent effort after losing at least 40 metres when he galloped at the start. 
They have 800 left to go. And Keystone Johnny, the leader by two metres now to Maori's Crown. Third on the inside was Nefertiri. Second quarter, 31.7. Three wide flame up, looming up. Nefertiri behind the leader, galloped. Jacobs Wiz is in the middle, fourth. Last sunset running on. And then West Texas crewed 15 off the lead. Keystone Johnny at the 500 metres, narrowly in front of Maori's Crown. Flame up off the track, joining in. Last sunset runs on. Jacobs Wiz is flat. And even West Texas crewed continues to run on. Flame up the leader going off the back through three metres. Last sunset after it. Mary's crown broke up. West Texas crude still running on. Third quarter in 30.5. It's flame up and last sunset the two Kiwis. Eight metres away third West Texas crude but it's last sunset putting its head in front of flame up. Five away West Texas crude. Last sunset drew to the lead up the straight from flame up West Texas crude but last sunset's coming away. Last sunset will win a great go for second but between West Texas crude, who might have got it, and what a run it. Last Sunset's first, photo the miners, West Texas crude flame up, nothing between them. I'm a cop too, became the first locally trained horse to win the South Australian Trotters Derby in nine years at Globe Derby Park, a week after the home field. Despite having the toughest run in the race, I'm a cop too, proved too good for Victorian stablemates, Ryan's Flash and Riggle Ann. Only the second filly to win the SA Classic in the past 40 years, I'm a Cop 2 emulated the feat of Profile, the first South Australian trained horse to win the derby for 20 years in 1990. And the front runner was Ryan's Flash, leading by four metres. I'm a Cop 2, second on the outside of Trotterholic. Rufus Roughcut was fourth. Next on the inside was Regal Ann. Then athlete Rocky Bloomfield coming out three deep to try and make ground. And the Glimmer Man half a lap away. Second quarter, 31.6. The first half was 64.5. At the 400, Ryan's Flash, still led by two metres to one, a cop two. Smith hasn't popped a question to the filly yet. Trotterholic third on the inside, then Rufus Roughcut. Forget Rocky Bloomfield, he's not in the race. At the 300, Ryan's Flash still led two metres. Smith's about to ask, I'm a cop two now for the supreme effort. Then Trotterholic, Regal Lamb was next in the straight. Ryan's Flash the leader, I'm a cop two trying to wear him down. Ryan's Flash tackled by, I'm a cop two. The filly moves to Ryan's Flash, she takes the lead. She is a very, very good filly. And I'm a cop two, sits in the breeze to win the derby by a metre. Second Ryan's flash, the stable mate got out late to get third Regal in. Eight days later, Storm Blazer claimed the spotlight when he won the Redwood Classic for two-year-old trotters at Maryborough. The 14th running of the Juvenile Classic, once again racing manners proved the decisive ingredient in the 2,000 metre standing start event. Driven by Chris Alford, Storm Blazer, originally purchased with a pacing career in mind, was the only leading fancy not to make a mistake in running as he completed the victorious size stake, Redwood Double. Heading out of the straight with 800 left to travel. Second quarter in 33 seconds. And Global Interest, the leader by two metres to Storm Blazer. Jerawara third, Monjani hooks out three wide. Quickly goes up to put pressure on the leaders. In fifth spot, Son of Flair, Alicia Brown next from Pretty Jessica. Truscott Steele making a move, 20 off the lead and wide. And then Miss Q. Down the back, it's Global Interest with the inside running. Storm Blazer the centre. And Monjani's out three deep, then Son of Flair around the outside, Truscott Steele has this been a run, peeling out four wide and charging into the race, then came Jerawara locked up as they leave the back straight the third quarter in 30.3 it's Global Interest, Storm Blazer off the track, Truscott Steele who went via the cape around the turn he ran off, into the straight, Storm Blazer led, Global Interest galloped Jerawara getting through, Truscott Steele, Son of Flair, Storm Blazer in front, Son of Flair peeling off him, Storm Blazer in front, Son of Flair galloped and Storm Blazer. Storm Blazer wins a Redwood Classic. Storm Blazer first, Jerawara second, Son of Flair third. Mother Courage had to live right up to her name before scoring a narrow win in the $150,000 Oceania El Dorado final at Mooney Valley at the end of July. John Caldo virtually lifted the Bruce Morgan trained filly over the line to win by a metre and a half, rating a slick 2.5.
2 minutes point 0.1 for the 2,060 metre trip. Heading out of the straight, approaching the 800 metres, and Sir Stroming in front, leading by a metre and a half to left the fakes. The second quarter in 31.2. Third is Spring Walton, Reve fourth, Pumpkin fifth, and then Mother Courage. Next on the inside, Lombo Americana, covering it up with Step Outside. Lombo a dream and racing outside of Aurelia, can't catch me in Super Toy last on the inside. About 500 left to go. And Sir Stroming, two metres in front, left the fakes was second. Spring Walton behind the leader, third. Third Sir Strumming just sneaks away. Wide out now. Mother Courage let loose is starting to chime into it. Step outside following. Lombo a dream and is right off the track running on. Third quarter 29.7. Sir Strumming gets away. Led six metres. Spring Waltz and Mother Courage is flat. Then came Step outside. Left the fakes gone. Reve shuffle back and Pumpkin running on. Sir Strumming into the straight. Led Spring Waltz and Mother Courage still there. Pumpkin back to the express post lane. Sir Strumming in front. Mother Courage coming. Pumpkin the inside. Side. Mother Courage hit the lead, she'll do it again. Mother Courage has won it. Second is close, probably Sir Strumming from Pumpkin using the express post lane. Former New Zealander Flame Up had luck on his side when he won the $40,000 Victoria Trotters Derby for big spending owner Stan Taylor and trainer driver Frank Secluna at Mooney Valley on the last night of July. The first stroke of good luck came when pre-post favourite last sunset was scratched on the morning of the Classic with a stone bruise. Flame Up was also in luck when the leader, West Texas Crude, broke in the middle stages, presenting Flame Up with a saloon passage along the inside to take the lead with a lap to run. West Texas Crude has galloped in front. He's galloped West Texas Crude. Flame Up getting through along the inside and took the front. Uh, he's still galloping West Texas Crude back to the tail end. Rocky Bloomfield without cover. And they head to the half mile. Flame up the short price favourite. Well, he looks to be presented with the race now. He goes through to lead into the back. He hasn't done any work at all. 34.3 the second quarter. And Frank Secluner about to set sail for home in the derby. Two metres clear of Rocky Bloomfield. Clay's coming three wide. Keystone Johnny through onto the back of the leader travelling well. Stroppy pad out three wide, four wide on the track, West Texas Crude, over in the centre then came Jacobs Whiz into a dead end, followed by Macray Whiz, Wise Bay, Mowry prone out the back as Corporate Killer, trotting down toward the 400 metre mark in the Trotters Derby, and the leader is Flame Up, he's about to go for home now, four metres clear of our deep on the track, getting to second, Clay's Keystone Johnny, he's about to get into the clear in plenty of time, right off the track, West Texas Crude, Stroppy Pat struggling, then Macray Whiz running home, turning at the top of the stretch in the Derby, the 30 30.6 point, 30 the third quarter and Flame Up goes for home. Here's Keystone Johnny coming it after him though into second placing. Down the outside Clays with Macray Wiz but Flame Up clear in the derby. He's holding Keystone Johnny and Macray Wiz and Flame Up. Flame Up wins the Trotters derby four metres. Two Keystone Johnny, third Macray Wiz, then Clays. Australia's leading rangewoman, Karen Manning, overcame a horror drive to pilot classy cult Sky Strike to victory in the $150,000 Oceania El Dorado at Mooney Valley. Despite pulling extremely hard and having a tendency to hang in all the way down the straight, Sky Strike finished powerfully to win by four and a half metres. Sky Strike rated 158.4 to equal Western Lights age record carving out the final 800 metres in 57.9 seconds, on his way to notching his 16th win from 24 starts. And it's the favourite, Wally Walton, Matthew Gath leading, three metres to drop dead gorgeous. Third, Vancouver Mac, Frugal Lord sliding up three wide around Friends for Life. Who's going to come out in front of it, though? Friends for Life came out three deep. Frugal Lord got forced four wide, and he's stuck there now. Leaders back, Vancouver Mac, and then Merlot. In between runners was Sky Strike keeping Frugal Lord four deep, and then Diamond Trinity on the inside of Art Scooter, and out wider was Silverline Pocket, Delmont Greg at the rear. Second quarter, 31.6, and Wally Walton, the leader down the back. He's put under some pressure, though. Drop Dead Gorgeous travelling well has almost joined him. Wally Walton about a neck in front. Front of Drop Dead Gorgeous, three wide is Friends for Life, four wide Frugal Lord, then Vancouver Mac, Merlot was next and then Sky Strike, DJ Scooter well back in the field as they head off the back straight, 
was Art Scooter and they were followed by Diamond Trinity, Silverline Pocket and Delmont Greg. Third quarter, 29-1. Wally Walton led narrowly from Drop Dead Gorgeous. Then Vancouver, Mac Merlo. Sky Strike running on strongly. Wally Walton led. Sky Strike is after it though. Sky Strike loomed up to hit the lead. He's drawn clear. Art Scooter runs on but Sky Strike will win the El Dorado final. Sky Strike first. Art Scooter second. Wally Walton third. At Mooney Valley that night, Mother Courage claimed the title as Australia's best three-year-old filly when she smashed her own age record in the $50,000 Australian Oaks. Withstanding a mid-race challenge from Kiwi fillies OK Rock and Electric Kiwi, Mother Courage showed toughness in holding out Frosty Lady to win by a half-head. Jewel Oaks winner OK Rock was seven metres away third. A multiple classic winner during the season, Mother Courage headed to the spelling paddock with a record of 19 wins from 32 starts and stake earnings of more than $293,000. Electric Kiwi zooms up to Mother Courage. Frosty Ladies down on the pegs trailing the leader. Out three white classy fillies had a very tough run. She's never been on the track. Then came Lombo a Dreamin', Sir Strumming three back the inside. Wide midfield, Universal first and then Spring Walton. Our Lady Rena down on the pegs and second last. As they head into the back, Eastwood Pearl, and at the end of the field is Step Outside. The second quarter was 28 seconds. They're into a strong headwind down the back, and Mother Courage, she has been tested tonight. Two metres clear. Second electric Kiwi. Three white classy filly. She has been virtually the trip. Frosty Ladies had a good run. Then OK Rock, and out three wide with cover. Lombo a Dreamin'. Three back the inside, Sir Strumming. Spring Walton Universal first, Our Lady Rena. And back second last, Eastwood Pearl, and at the end of the the field step outside 30.3 the third quarter mother courage turns three meters in front of electric kiwi frosty lady about to get out and then came sir strumming mother courage three meters in front frosty ladies out and plenty of time then sir strumming mother courage of the hundred two meters frosty lady trying to cut her down mother courage in front frosty lady diving mother courage hangs on a great win her best mother courage the champion three-year-old filly and there ain't no doubt about that Mother Courage won it. Second, Frosty Lady. Third's close. So strumming, battling on with OK. Impeccable manners were the main ingredients for the win of promising youngster Perfect Balance in the Edgar Tatlow Stakes for two-year-old trotters at Mooney Valley. Driven by John Ryan for Tatura trainer Patsy Abrahams, Perfect Balance took over in front mid-race before scoring by five metres. And Jerawara, second quarter in 31.3. They're into a strong headwind down the back. And Perfect Balance is two metres to Son of Flair. Four metres away, Troublesome Miss out wide. Then Miss Q, Robbie DJ. Storm Blazers still making ground. Is about 15 off the lead, four deep, but running on. Perfect Balance off the back of the 400. Led three metres to Son of Flair. Eight away, Storm Blazer. Troublesome Miss flat. And then Robbie DJ and Monjani from a long way back out wide. Third quarter, 30.7. And perfect balance led. Five metres, Son of Flair, flat but sticking. Eight metres away, third as they turn, Storm Blazer. Perfect balance into the straight. Four metres to Son of Flair. Eight away, Storm Blazer. Perfect balance of the hundred. Holding Son of Flair at the moment. So it's uh, four metres in front. Son of Flair can't get perfect balance and he's got just that. A perfect balance for a trotter and does the job in grand style. Perfect balance first, beat Son of Flair and third home Storm Blazer. Local hero Benefactor chalked up his 22nd win at Albion Park when he won the $75,000 Forex Gold Winter Cup on the 7th of August. Off the second row, Michael Ducks slipped around the field early to face the breeze before suling Benefactor to the front, turning for home. A comfortable winner, Benefactor rated 157.3 for 2,647 metres, in stretching his earnings to almost a quarter of a million dollars, the result of 32 wins from 52 starts. They run to the end of the second quarter. It comes up in 30.4. There has been no loafing. After dues in front. Benefactor, a neck back second. Admiral's Avenue, a length back third and three wide. Back of Benner, he snugly placed fourth on the pegs between runners Kaye McKidd. He's strung up in traffic. Undercover lover, spotting these leaders about three lengths start and the pressure is going on at the top end now. Then Franco looks good. Journey's in. Sly by. Franco hat trick and Sovereign Hill and Devil's Dream second last and last. Daryl Douglas has to get 
busy on have to do. Benefactor drew to a neck. Half three-quarter length lead. But Admirals Avenue is closing and so too is Undercover Lover. And then came Kay McKinnon sly by. Third quarter, 29-1. He's got 200 left to go, Benefactor, to try and win the biggest race of his career. Coming after him, Undercover Lover, then Admirals Avenue. It's Benefactor in front. Undercover Lover is cutting down the margin. Come on, little B. Come on, Benefactor. Queensland's best pacer. Punched out hard. It's Benefactor's winner cup. At his brilliant best, Benefactor is first. Kayima Kids run second. Undercover Lover is third. Admirals Avenue next with Franco Hattrick. Then came Slyby.